Hi, I'm Rob. In this video, I'm setting up a tool setter in Linux CNC. Your first question is, what is a tool setter? When I googled it, it gave the same description as a touch plate. My definition for a tool setter would be an automated process using a touch sensor or touch plate that is capable of setting multiple bits to the same zero height on a project. As I record this, I am undecided if it would be best to show the tool setter in action or to talk about what's going to happen first. So if you want to zoom ahead to the 1245 mark, then that's fine with me. Just come back and watch how it's set up if you're interested at that point. I'll quickly talk you through an example of how I want this to actually work in the real world. I have a made up project that will use five different bits. If you're using the tried and true paper method, you lower the bit till it grabs the paper, it will work. But how a surfacing bit grabs that paper is different how a V-bit grabs that paper, so you're going to have inconsistent results. A touch plate is much better, but only if the plate is the exact same spot, same orientation, plus it takes more time. For this imaginary project, I want to force me to measure the top of the project with my existing touch plate first. If I forget to measure the top first, I want a pop-up message to tell me to measure the top. After that first touch off with my touch plate, it will then touch off on the tool setter. It will store the difference between those two measurements. For this example, let's say that measurement was 0 0.607 inches difference. Technically, the number will be minus 0 0.607, but doesn't really matter to us. Then it will run the toolpath for that first bit. Then I want it to go to the top of the Z entry, move to a set position for you to manually change the bit. Once that is done, I will click a button and it will go to the tool setter, touch off, and it will set that Z height to 0 0.607 for that new tool. Once done setting that height, it will run that toolpath for that bit and then keep repeating until all the toolpaths are finished. For the setup I'm showing in this video, I added a line to the INI file, I added a subroutine G code script, and I made a post processor. Actually, I created a second post processor file, one for the tool changes and one for no tool changes. I'm not saying adding this tool setter is a simple project, but is much easier than the other methods I've seen for doing the same thing in Linux CNC. There is a link in the notes where you can download the subroutine file and the post processors I'm using. Do not just plug these into your machine and assume it will work. There's a good chance you'll damage your machine. So don't come to me when you mess things up without testing and modifying these files to work with your machine. Prerequisites. You need to have a touch plate already working for this and you need to be using machine homing, using the G53 coordinates. Years ago, I did some Linux CNC videos on touch plates and homing. They are old, and the production quality was crap, but the process works. You also need to have a physical tool setter. For this video, I made up a simple one. It is mediocre at best, at least for now, and I'm not getting repeatability of less than 7,000 at this point, so that's not good enough for a tool setter, but for this video, it'll work just fine. For wiring up the new tool setter, I'm using the exact same wiring as the touch plate uses. We're just sharing the wiring, same inputs, everything is exactly the same. When I drilled down to the basic info I needed to make this work, I decided that I only really need to know the difference between the top of the project and the tool setter. I kept thinking there were other bits of information I needed, like the item thickness, how far below the spoil board the tool setter is, the G53 location of the item and the tool setter, but that just muddied up the water. All I care about is a measurement between the top of the item and the tool setter. Nothing else matters. There are multiple things that need to be done to make this all work together. The first thing is we need to change the INI file used for our machine parameters. We're going to add one line to it, which is right here, remap equals M6, modal group equals 6, NGC equals tool setter. So there's a file we've created out here called toolsetter.ngc and it's going to be in our routines folder. You might have a different name for that, but odds are if you have a touch plate, you've got some folder out there called something similar to routines, whatever. But I've put a file called toolsetter.ngc into that routines folder. So when it sees M6 in G code, it's gonna call that and run that file we've created. I've also changed the post processor used in vCarve. Uh, this will work for all the Vectric products. If you use something other than Vectric, there's probably some kind of post processor, but honestly, I don't know a darn thing how other ones work, so you'll have to do that part on your own. I actually have two post processors now. Before I had just one. 
This one on the left here is when there is not going to be tool changes. It's just called, I put my name in there, that's how I do it. The other one, same name except the word tool setter is in there. That's what will show up inside of vCarve when you're looking for post processors. It's this name right here. This one, the original one, originally did have an M6 command in it. I put a plus sign in here, which comments that out. So that's T equals tool number and M6 means to change the tool. I put the T right there. So that comments that out. It's not going to be seen now, not run, when it runs the post processor. I did one other thing. I added number 31 equals minus 100. The number 31 is a variable or a parameter, they call it in Linux CNC. All this means is the last step it does when ending a G code file, it's going to set that to minus 100. I'll show what that means later, but we'll use that often in this process. We also have that same command inside the tool setter one. So whenever we run G code, it's always going to set that variable to minus 100. One other thing we added here is what to do when it sees M6. M6 is tool change. So here's a comment. In the G code, there should be a space before this. That's kind of nice. And then a comment, start tool change. M5 obviously means stop the spindle. M6, and that's the tool number here, and the tool name. We'll see that in the G code. So that's where it's going to call that routine we're going to look at in a second. That's where I call that routine, which actually goes through and sets the height of the Z axis for that individual tool. M3 starts the spindle again. And here it's going to wait five seconds while the spindle speeds up. And then end tool changes the comment. And it'll go back to the G code again. This is a G code file that was created by that post processor for tool changes. We'll take this out of the machine and run this later. Anything in parentheses is a comment. Machine does not really care what that is. It just is for us to look at. Get the setup. Here is the M6 command, which it will call that routine again. We mentioned that the machine sees that M6. It'll run that routine. And then T5 is, 5 is the tool number. And that tool number is a one inch end mill. M3 starts the spindle again. And this spins up, waits five seconds while the spindle speeds up to speed. And then here's where we actually study, start doing some cuts. It's a very simple cut, only a few lines. Then here's where we saw this command before. Let's go back to that right here. This section is what creates this right here. So M5 tool stop, spindle stop right there. M6 T12. So M6, the tool name. M3, again, M6, that's where it's going to run that subroutine. And here's where it's done. It's going to start the spindle up again, which we can see. Start the spindle up again. Let the spindle spool up, and we're done. Here's that space I mentioned that we had put the spaces in here. So it's easy to read the geocode that way. Here's another tool path that runs. And here's another M6. So again, same process. Stop the spindle. Run that subroutine we saw before. Once it's done, start the spindle up again, wait five seconds, go on to the next one. Does this several times. If you had five tool changes in here, you'd see that five times. This tool path only has three tools used. And the first one, you have the M3, I'm sorry, the M6 right there for that first one. And then after each one, you start it again. Again, we mentioned that variable number 31 to minus 100. It sees that when it's done running the whole G code, Next time you run a G code, it'll see that that value is 100. So it, that affects how it starts the process next time. I mentioned before how I had 31, the variable 31 set to minus 100 after a normal tool path. When you use the touch plate, I have it set to zero. That will let us know when we start a new G code file, if we've already touched off the touch plate. If we have not used it, it'll be minus 100. If we have used the touch plate, it'll reset that variable to zero. Helps us in our logic later. We've already looked at the INI file. We've looked at the both post processors, and we've looked at the G code that's created. The last thing to look at is the subroutine that runs when it sees M6. So here's that G code again. Whenever it sees M6, that line right there, it's going to run this process next. The first time we're going to see it, that M6 right there, 
the question it has right then is, is number 31 equal to minus 100? If it's 100, we haven't run our touch plate yet, so it's gonna abort and you have to start over and you'll run the touch plate. Next time, when touch plate runs, it's gonna set it to zero, so it's gonna see this step right here. If number 31 equals zero, it'll run this process. And all this does is moves above the tool setter, goes down at a faster speed, resets, goes up a little bit, and goes at a slow speed until it touches, and it sets number 31 equal to the Z height. That's the, the Z height of that second. And it's usually around minus 1.5, depends on the length of the bit, of course. It'll show this message on the screen that tells us distance between top of item and tool setter is or equals whatever that number is. And we're going to store that into number 31. Once it's done, it goes back up to the top of the Z height possible and sets above the item for the XYZ, I'm sorry, XY. Then it'll run this tool path right here. And we get to a tool change again. It sees that M6. It will not run this because number 31 is not equal to minus 100. And it will not run this one because number 31 is not equal to zero. We reset it to the height of Z at that point, which is, we'll say, minus 1.5. So it sees this else. It'll run this process right here. It's going to go at this point to a set spot on my machine where it's easy for me to do a tool change. It takes Z up to the, near the top of the height it can go to and Y minus three X 11, which is irrelevant there, but it's an easy spot for me to change my tool. I'll get a message here once the change, change the bit and then press pause, resume when you're finished. That'll start the machine running again. Now it goes above the tool setter and it starts going down again at a somewhat fast speed, though I think there are, I have F, my speed different rates on here. Here it was uh, F20, here I got F10. I'm gonna change that, but it doesn't really matter for you guys watching right now. It pops up a little bit then goes down much slower and it stops at that point. And then, then it will set the Z to that negative number. So G92, Z number 31, that variable again. And that'll set our Z height for that new bit. And it goes back to the top of the Z possible gantry number and sets above our item and it's done. So at that point, it sees M3, starts the spindle again, waits a few seconds and runs the next G code. So that's how the whole process works. It's time now to go actually watch this on the machine. We are now out at the machine. I'm hitting the play button and I get this error message that pops up. I am now using the touch plate to get a nice zero setting for the top of the item. This time it knows we set that variable number 31 to zero when we touch the touch plate. So it is now going to go over to the tool setter and find the difference between the top of the item and the tool setter height. It has now stored that value of minus 2.055 into our variable number 31 and it's showing on the screen for us. It's now run that first very short tool path with the one inch skimming bit. It has now positioned itself in the spot I want so I can easily change the bit. I need to wait for it to come to a stop and then I will change the bit and press the pause resume button and it will keep going. I could be pressing the X on these message boxes, but I kind of like seeing them there, so I'll leave them there through the end of the video. Now I hit that pause resume button and it starts moving again. Now it's going down to the tool setter again. This time, once it touches the second time, it will set the new Z height of minus 2.055. Now it returns back to our part and will run the second tool path for that second bit, which is the quarter inch end mill.
And now it's back to my predetermined spot to do the tool change. I again, we'll let the bit stop spinning, then I will change out to the eighth inch end mill. This one takes a little bit longer because I have a different collet for that one. So it takes a little longer to change. I will hit the pause resume button and we'll let it go over the tool setter again. It will run the same process, setting the height for the eighth inch end mill, which again will be minus 2.055 when it sets it, and then goes back to the machine and runs the final tool path. The last thing it does in the G-code is sets number 31 to minus 100 again. So it knows next time we run this, we will have to run the touch plate again before it'll run the program. For anyone out there considering doing this on their own machine, make sure you go to the toolsatter.ngc file and change the location where you manually change the bits and the location of your tool setter itself. And then before you run it on your own machine, run it very, very slow with your finger on the emergency stop button, just in case there are issues. Run this many times in the test mode before you trust it with real bits and at full speed. If you've learned anything from this video or enjoyed watching it, please consider giving it a like or even subscribing to my channel. Have a great day, everyone.